Hey there, welcome to this video on uh, how using effective parent-teacher communication can help you to build a strong and vibrant classroom community. Whether you're a new teacher or a seasoned educator, this video is packed with valuable tips and strategies to enhance your communication with parents. Before we get started, uh, just a reminder to hit like and subscribe and the bell icon. So proactively building effective parent-teacher communication can be a cornerstone for your success in creating a strong classroom community. And as we know, classroom community is pivotal in a successful year and uh, effective classroom management. Just as positive communication builds a thriving classroom, the same results can be achieved with effective parent-teacher communication. I don't know about you, but I have often discussed my children's teachers with others, and I'm aware that parents have talked about me too. Kinder words are spoken by those who you know and uh, who know you in a positive way. You know, I've met with more than a few parents who assumed their children were ex exhibiting poor behavior at school. It was often a wonderful feeling to tell the parents that their child was a delight to have in my classroom. Those moments were powerful and humbling, and they open doors for parents to ask about working with and teaching their child, what it looked like in the classroom, how I did it. Um, the gratitude I received from parents became some of the highlights of my teaching career. So what are some of the benefits of effective parent-teacher communication? Well, just like when two parents agree in the home, when parents and teachers work together to support a student, behavior, uh, academic achievement and social skills can all improve with ongoing contact. Regular and effective parent-teacher communication from the beginning of the year normalizes positive communication and can create a rapport for more challenging discussions that might occur later. And they may just become quick touch pace discussion because you're on the same page. They know you love their kids. They know that you're open to communication. They don't feel like they have to bang down the door to get your attention. Our school recommends sending out an email about a month before the school year starts to introduce yourself and provide a brief idea of what to expect for the year. And I'll tell you one situation where I had a student come uh, mid-year and by the time the family visited our school in December um, and the still wasn't, student wasn't arriving to January, I had their desk in place because I was getting ready for the new year. So I was crafting up my um, seating plans. I had their nameplate on their desk. So when that student came to visit, I could show them where they were going to sit. And I had already written the parents and said, hey, welcome, just a little bit about me. I'll be including you in the weekly emails just so you kind of get a sense of the rhythm of what's, you know, who I am, what's going to be happening, what the new year will look like, just um, so you know what's coming. Do you know, it was so powerful. That boy felt, uh, you know, already like he was a bit of the class. He could see himself in the class. The parents weren't worried about um, approaching me and they had seen the classroom where he was. They knew that I was prepared for him. It just set a completely different tone. So our school, um, so giving your parents an idea of what to expect can be very powerful and, and can um, prevent any kind of, or not all, it's not going to prevent all stress between you and parents, but it really can have a powerful impact and um, stop a lot of it in its tracks. So as I just mentioned, I did send home weekly newsletters with updates on classroom activities, upcoming units, field trips, and other information. The primary team that I worked with, we also used an app, and I can't for the life of me remember it now, and I'm not using it anymore, but an app that we sent pictures throughout the day and allowing parents to see their child in action at school. Does that mean that I was standing sending pictures all day every day? No, it does. There were many days that no pictures went home. But when we had a special event going on or the kids were playing a math game or whatever, it's easy for me, if I remember, to take a picture. And a few of those going home just did wonders with the parents. And if you can get school approval, I mean, we were working towards using these as a portfolio uh, of the students' work um, instead of doing written report cards. Um, in our school, in our province, this is theoretically involved. The, our school, I was working in an independent school, wasn't necessarily uh, ready to lead that charge, but um, we were working towards getting ready and practicing for it, for sure. 
These days, teachers have multiple options for effective parent-teacher communication. As I mentioned, the weekly or even monthly newsletters, classroom apps, emails, and even social media platforms can all be used to engage parents and keep them informed. Of course, you're going to have to check with your school district and... Uh, I mean, there are some entire states where um, you're not even allowed to show a child's arm or hand, never mind show their face on social media. So, of course, that's not an option for everybody, but that doesn't mean it's not an option for anyone, especially if you are able to block people that aren't um, a part of your classroom group. Consider using an app that accepts videos and photos or um, consider including these in your emails or newsletters. I, uh, this, the, the communication system we were required to use at my school didn't take attachments very well for emails. So I didn't use that. Uh, well, you could do it, but it was really laborious. And so, uh, we found having a separate app worked better for us, but if you can get an all in one app, that's fantastic. Um, interactive tools like these apps can be more engaging for parents and give them a greater sense of what's happening in the classroom. And that works for the best because uh, we want our parents to open our emails and um, because not all of us, I'm a parent who opens every email, every piece of information about my kid, kids. But first of all, I only had two. I didn't have five like my mom. And second of all, reading is easy for me. So I wasn't overwhelmed by them. And I didn't work full time when my kids were younger. So I had more time. So whatever we can do to make it easily accessible, engaging, and um, powerful to parents, that will help us a lot. It sounds like I'm putting a lot on your shoulders, but the downside benefit is, um, or the down river benefit is so much in your favor, truly. So parent-teacher conferences do remain a crucial part of our communication strategy. These meetings provide an opportunity to understand the parent-child relationship and better and to gain useful insights. Face-to-face -face telephone contact, um, uh, face -to -face, sorry, face-to-face -face and telephone contact are both still very effective and essential at times. And, um, and I will just say that in parent-teacher conferences, my go-to strategy was asking them what they needed to know before I dove into everything I wanted to share. Sometimes a daily communication log is needed for uh, some of our neurotypical or behavioral students. Um, and I mean, of course, when you get to, in our school, it was intermediate, there may be an agenda going home every day. And that is technically a daily communication log. But I'm talking about something more specific than that, where the parents can be informed. And in our province, they have the right to be informed this way um, and give them information about their child's day so they can follow it up hear what worked or didn't work for the child. And so they can be powerful, effective, and necessary. But this can be as simple as writing a quick note in a daily agenda for two to three students each day, providing that specific positive feedback to the parents. And if you don't have one particular student who needs it, if it's not a requirement, maybe it is something you wanna do. Maybe even do it the night before. Write it up or type it out and just have two or three students' journals that you glue it in so that they would get that consistent communication in the agenda. And again, I'm not suggesting you do all of these strategies, but you can see that some of them would work more effectively for you. Structured feedback that gives parents a sense of direction can be very helpful. In sensitive situations, this feedback should be specific, timely, and constructive. This is not the time for a three-page email. It's specific and it's immediate and it's constructive, not destructive. Keep the language positive, folks. By, welcome parents to, by welcoming parents to voice their concerns and actively participating in their child's education, you create a stronger partnership. Early short conversations can prevent pro prolonged problems. And I can tell you the story of parents who held on to it for 18 months and I just I kept my students typically for two years and there was one incident and I didn't really understand that the parent was still holding on to it and it didn't make sense because what they had heard was one side of the story and so by the time I'd almost finished teaching their child 18 months later they asked me very specific questions and it's like okay well here's the other side of the story and they quickly realized oh oops and uh, I can only think what would have happened 
in the last, how would it have happened differently in those two years? And hopefully would have happened differently in those two years had we had direct um, discussion about that. And that was before I was really comfortable inviting uh, very protective parents into my uh, classroom. Of course, there are going to be many kinds of challenges like protective parents or uh, inappropriate parents even. And language barriers can be a problem, technical difficulties with parents who are not good with tech. Uh, that can require patience and persistence and kindness. Um, sometimes you get to laugh. Uh, during COVID, we worked with an app and, you know, I was happily communicating with the parent. And then one day I said something to the parent about the student. And that day overnight, they had taught their child how to access it so the child could work alone from home the next day. And suddenly I was communicating with the student and that was, you know, it wasn't a technical barrier so much, but um, it was certainly an awareness piece and these kind of things happen and we have to work through them. So fortunately I had a great relationship with this student and the parent and we laughed together. Uh, so learning to laugh when appropriate can be a huge help. Ensuring effective parent-teacher communication is foundational for a strong classroom community. By using various communication tools and strategies, engagement does become easier and students receive the necessary support and teachers can build a collaborative and inclusive educational environment. It works, folks. I appreciate you sharing your time with me today and I offer my free classroom management checklist to you as a free gift. And so you can use the bit.ly link that you see on the screen, scan the QR code with your phone, camera or find the link in the description below. Thank you so much for joining me today. On the right, you'll see I've linked in a video that uh, is related content for those of you who are binge watchers. And uh, please remember to like and subscribe. Hope to see you soon. Bye for now.